Hi and welcome to my review of the Daytools LS8906 soldering station. I mainly bought this soldering station because I wanted something for my garage which just had an old soldering iron which broke and I looked at cheap stations and I found this one. It's only 15 euros which is incredibly cheap and I had to try it out. Let's take a look at the facts and figures of the soldering station. It's supposed to be for 230 volts, rated power of 48 watts, and a temperature range from 160 to 480 degrees. The cable length with 1.1 meter and the dimensions, it's like 15 by 10 by 7 centimeters. I have already read the instructions. There's nothing major in them, nothing new like health and safety information, what it's supposed to be used for, how to use it. If you want to, to replace the soldering iron itself, there is a manual on how to do that. There is also uh, information about that there are replacement soldering tips available, which is great. It's like down here. First, Let's take a closer look at the station. Uh, first we have the on-off switch on the side. It looks like it might have a light to show you that it's on. Then we have the temperature dial. It says like 160 degrees on the left and 500 all the way to the right. It it is also has the cleaning pad for cleaning your soldering tip. This is the soldering iron. It has this protective piece. Yeah, let's take a look. This is the tip. I'm gonna get it off. Maybe zoom in on the tip a little bit to show you. Yeah, that's the tip. Let's put the soldering tip back in. It is quite a big one. And screw it up top. Yeah. The holder for the iron actually works quite well. You can just throw it in there and it will stay. It won't fall out of it and it's pretty stable. You, you won't get it to tip. So that's nice. Yeah, I like that. They've done a great job. Here, yeah. let's take a look at the shielding. It's also quite good because it, it protects you from grabbing the, the hot parts of the soldering iron. If you like lose your balance and try to hold yourself up on the table, you won't grab any hot parts. Or if you grab the station, there is no way you grab anything hot. Of course, it's not completely idiot proof if you let me get that out. Oh, it's pretty good in there. That's also a good thing. So it won't come out during normal operation. Yeah, I can't get it out. Let me show it this way. It's open at the bottom, so you can get your fingers in there if you really try. But I guess if you burn yourself this way, you got only yourself to blame. And that is pretty good shielding. Now I want to take a closer look at the iron itself and the cable. It is a H03VVF 3G 0.5 square millimeters. I'm uh, going to try to zoom that in and show you up close. You can see VVF. I don't know how to spell the brand, but 
I'm really not sure if that's the right wire for this application. Let's see the mains line. And it's probably exactly the same. Yeah, it is. It is exactly the same. H03VVF. So I'm really not sure if this is the right line for this application. I need to look that up. I got the textbook out and I got the line which is H03VVF and it clearly states only to use in dry rooms with low mechanical stress, not for heating appliances. Well, a soldering iron gets kind of hot, doesn't it? Yeah. I think this is completely the wrong cable for this application. First of all, it's supposed to be for light mechanical stress and I argue that this, this isn't light. This is more than light mechanical stress because the mains cable, you can argue that this is only light mechanical stress because once you have set it up, it will stay like this and you don't need to move it all that much. But, on, but if you work with, this, with the soldering iron, you constantly move it around. So I do think that the mechanical stress is above the specified only light. So I do think you, you would have to use a cable that at least has V2, V2, which is for normal mechanical stress, like one would use on a vacuum cleaner or something like that. This is not the right cable for the stress and it is also not the right cable for the temperature requirements because you can easily touch it with the soldering iron also the mains cable you can touch that that's a fail definitely a fail they should have used a h05rr rated cable for this application i went around my household and took a look at other appliances for example like this milk creamer which also heats the milk and it also has this ho 3 VV line. Maybe you can see it down here. HO3 VV. Just, just like the soldering iron. But the people who make this can argue that this is the heating appliance. This is not. And I've also read a provision where you can use this line if during normal operation the cable can't touch any heat elements. So this is probably fine because this cable during normal operation there's no way you can um, touch something that is too hot. So I think in this application it would be okay. I found this uh, old soldering iron of mine. It only has like 20 watts of power and it also uses the same cable. It's an HO3VVF. I'm gonna zoom on it so you can take a look for yourself. So you can see the same HO3VVF. I also have this uh, soldering station. It's a ZD987. Uh, I don't know the make of it. It's a uh, yeah, it doesn't really say that, but it does use the right cable. It's an. I'm gonna zoom in again. Here you go. It's an HO5 RRF, which is the right cable. Let's take a closer look at the soldering iron itself. It has the tip. To screw it in. It also has the soft rubber shroud on it, so you have a good grip on the soldering iron itself, which is a good thing. And it has the tri-wing security screws in here. I'm gonna take it apart and see what's in there. The cable has a strain relief. I don't see no markings on the 
case. Those are ceramic insulators for temperature reasons. So the protective earth goes straight to the metal casing and inside here we probably have the heating element. Grab that. Uh, I don't like to destroy it or damage it. So this is the heating element. I don't see any over temperature protection like a switch or something like that. No bimetal switch, just the heating element. I'm gonna zoom in on it a bit. This is the heating element up close. There are no temperature switches to protect it from over temperature. Just the nickel wire. It's probably a nickel or nickel alloy wire, which are quite good with temperature. And there is nothing special to it, just a heating element. Now I'm going to reassemble the soldering iron back together. I'm going to stick the heating element inside to be careful not to damage the ceramic insulators. So the soldering iron is back together again. I want to tear it apart and see what's in there. What makes it tick. I can see two screws up here, but I suspect there might be some underneath the feet. So I'm gonna, yeah, right. Let's pop, pop that open. Ah, yeah, got it. So the cables do have some strain relief, which is good. And this is supposed to be the hatch to change the wires out. The screws are, of course, all soft tappers because there is no need to use anything else because you don't open the case on a regular basis. Therefore, these are completely fine. Let's open it up and see what's in here. Yeah, there is a main switch. This is the, the case for the accessories. And there is a big metal bar in here, <laughs> probably to weigh the station down so it doesn't topple over. <laughs> okay, so let's take it out. It won't come out. Yeah, there are two bars. Yeah. Two metal plates to weigh the base down so it doesn't topple over. Which is a good idea. I do like that they did that. It's an extra manufacturing process and you do get the benefit of a more stable station. So. Good thing. Next up, this is the board. That's all there is to it. So mains comes in, goes through the switch, goes probably through the board and there is probably some face shifting design or something like that. And I also don't see any fasteners or clips on this board. So it's probably just screwed onto the top by this dial. Let's see if I can take it up. Oh uh, yeah, got it off. So the dial just sticks in and this is just 
screwed on. I got some pliers to get this nut off. Try to be careful not to damage anything too much. And here we go. Pop that out the back. Yeah, got it off. This is the whole board. There is a trimmer, a small transistor or something. What does it say? This is probably a triac or something like that. Like four capacitors. This is probably a common mode choke. This is a inductive element and a two potis and three, four resistors and that's it. I want to show you a close-up of the back of the board. Yeah, some parts seem to be hand soldered and all in all it looks a bit crusty. You can also see the production code. This board was probably made on 1st November 2016. You can also see the model number ZD8906. The 3 stands probably for the revision of the board. I bet this is just some small phase shifting board. I'm going to focus on the active element so you can see for yourself. Yeah, you can see. I'm going to look for the data sheet what that is and probably the, this, this whole board is just a, an implementation of the recommendation from the manufacturer. I've looked the data sheet up for the semiconductor and it is a logic level triac capable of 600 milliamps and this soldering iron is rated at like 48 watts which is like only 220 milliamps. This triac should survive the operation and I don't see anything else which might give you trouble. This inductive element is glued down so it doesn't vibrate off or anything like that. Everything else looks stable and I don't expect any trouble in the future with this one. I want to take a look at the wiring because I'm not sure what and how they did so I'm gonna cut the zip ties on here and this one. This is mains, this is soldering. Get that, yeah. Protective earth goes straight to the soldering iron, which is good, great. The face or the hot wire is switched when you turn it on, turn it on. These two get connected and the, this cable goes up here and this is from the soldering iron this is also from the soldering iron this goes to mains and i don't see any cabling for a temperature sensor and i suspect it doesn't have one so this is only temperature controlled not temperature regulated because i had a look at the packaging and it clearly states that this one is temperature regulated which is a big difference because temperature regulation requires you to have uh, some sensing element in the soldering iron which tells you how hot it is and gives the feedback back to the regulator and so you can regulate the temperature but this has no temperature sensor so it's only temperature controlled that's another fail because the Packaging clearly states temperature regulation. Now I want to take a look at the top cover. There is not much to it. There are no screws or clips for the pad, so I guess it's just glued in. Yeah, I don't want to rip it up. There also seems to be like a protective... There is a protective foil on there. Yeah. This looks much better. <laughs> now I'm gonna uh, put everything back together 
and try the soldering station out. It's a good thing it has rubber feet, so it doesn't slide around on the table. It's quite stable construction. Yeah, now I got it all back together. I'm gonna try it out and see what's what. I wanna test how long it takes to heat it up. For that, I'm gonna use the timer on my phone. I'm gonna put it down here. You can read it, so let's put the timer down here. For temperature measurement, I'm gonna use my Gossen Mitrahit 2 Plus. It has a temperature setting, let's turn it on. If you short circuit the leads, it will show you the internal temperature, which is at the moment 20 degrees. Yeah, 20 degrees. I'm going to be measuring the temperature with this cheap thermocouple. It's really nothing special, but I think for this application there's no need for anything fancy. Plug that in. It says 19 degrees, so we are within 1 degree. Yeah, 19 plus 6, it's, if you round it, that's 20. I'm going to set up the iron to 300 degrees, which is right on top. I'm going to turn it on, start the timer, and put the temperature probe up against the soldering iron like that, so you can see what's going on. So let's go turn it on, start the timer, and put the probe on the, on the iron. So we're halfway there, 150 at four minutes. Ooh. Let it run. We are like eight minutes in. Let's check the temperature again. Where are we? At two thirty. Yeah, I think this is where I can solder after like nine minutes. 255, we're coming close to 260. This is actually the temperature range where you can solder. I'm gonna grab my a little bit of solder and try to get the tip wet. So 10 minutes in and we can get the tip wet, yeah. See that? Yeah, it is wet. I don't want it all over my camera, though. 270. I've changed my setup. I'm using this cheap uh, multimeter to measure the temperature because the Gossen only goes to 400 degrees Celsius. I've let the soldering iron cool down completely. It's cold to the touch. 
and this time I'm gonna crank the power all the way to 500 degrees. I'm gonna turn on the soldering iron and start the timer. So here we go. On, starting the timer and starting the temperature measurement. Of course the cable isn't in the way. And here we go. minutes and we are at 240 degrees 250 so that's more reasonable if you want a fast heating to heating up time so the yeah so the manual states a heating up time of three minutes and after three minutes and like 30 seconds we are at 270 degrees which is hot enough to melt solder already so I'm gonna get a little bit of solder and see if I can wet the tip and yeah no problem see there so yeah at full power it takes about three minutes three and a half minutes to heat it up so we are now at coming close to four minutes and we are at 320 degrees Four minutes coming up now, 320. Yeah. We are at 10 minutes now and we are at 473, 470, yeah, 473 degrees. So the package claim that it goes from 480 to 160 is probably right. I'm gonna turn it down to 300 and let it cool down a bit. Yeah, that's it for the speed test. So now let's test out the soldering iron. I've let it heat up at 300 degrees. Let's see, yeah, it melted. And let's see if it solders correctly. I have this small board with, with just a few resistors on there and I'm gonna solder them up and see if it, if it actually works. So let's start at the bottom. Yeah, no problem there. So yeah, it does the job. Now I want to do a close up of the soldering action. Let's see how that goes. First let's heat it up, then add the solder. And, yeah, nice. Heating up, adding a dab of solder, nice. Trying to keep the soldering iron out of the way of the camera. Yeah, quite nice. No issues here. And after the heat testing, the soldering tip still looks fine. Still gets wet all the way. Still is all shiny. That's nice. 
the soldering tip isn't all that bad and the results are okay. What's my verdict on this cheap soldering station? First, I don't like this cheap cable. It isn't designed for this application. It should really be at least a H05RRF, not this one. Second, there is no temperature regulation like the packaging promised. It really says right on the packaging, temperature regulation, but it's only temperature control, like it says <laughs> on the thing itself. It has only temperature control. You have to be aware of that. Um, which brings me to the next point. The heat up time, if you just set it to like your desired temperature, like 300 degrees, the heat up time will be quite long. I measured at least 10 minutes. If you want to heat it quick, you have to crank it up all the way. Wait like 3-4 minutes until it reached a high enough temperature, then dial it down to your desired temperature. Another point you can criticize is that it has no fuses internally. There is no over temperature protection, so if you isolate this or if it gets stuck somewhere in between and it will heat up till it destroys itself. You have to be aware of that. Don't leave it alone. Now to the things I like about it. The first thing I like about this is its simple design. There is not much to it, just an on-off switch, a temperature dial, a cleaning pad and a holder for your iron. You don't need much more. The next thing I like about it, it's very stable. You can throw in the iron without any problems. You can't tip it over easily and it has rubber feet so it doesn't slide on your bench around. It's, it really is quite stable. It has uh, additional weights in the base, so it doesn't tip over, which is also nice. Uh, yeah, I like that, it's quite robust. Another thing I like is this protective shroud. It covers the whole iron, so you can touch it accidentally, of course, if you leave it running for like half an hour. This will also heat up, but it's nowhere near as hot as the soldering iron itself, so that's a good safety measure. And the last thing I like about this uh, particular soldering station is its price. It's only 15 euros. You can't beat that. It's, it's actually cheaper than some standalone soldering irons, which have no regulation whatsoever. So what's my final opinion on this soldering station? Well, I quite like it. I think it will do the job. I don't regret buying it and if a friend would ask me what should he buy if he just wants some cheap small station, I would certainly recommend it. There's nothing completely wrong with it. Sure it has its weaknesses like this cable or that it's only temperature controlled, not regulated, but all in all it's quite useful. I'm sure I'm gonna be using it without any hesitations and for that price it's it's a winner so thumbs up if you like to support the channel please subscribe if you like this video uh, leave me a thumbs up if you have any other questions or comments leave them in the comment section below that's it for me see you next time bye